Welcome, my dear university students and others, to Chapter 9's coverage of molecular geometry and bonding theories. To begin this lecture series, I would like to share with you an incredible fun fact! Okay, it might not necessarily be that fun, but it's something that to me is at least interesting, particularly for those of you who go on to take organic chemistry from me, in which I will teach you more details about this. So as it turns out, a medicine's IC50 value is a measure of how much of that medicine is required to decrease an unwanted symptom by 50%. For example, the IC50 value of paclitaxel, known commercially as Taxol, against several human cancer cell lines is 2.5 to 7.5 nanomolar. And this means that a patient with that type of cancer would, in theory, have to maintain a taxol tissue concentration of 2.5 to 7.5 nanomoles per liter for that drug to effectively inhibit the cancer by 50%. Cool! All right. Let's move on then to a hilarious chemistry cat or cats of the day. This one says, how often do I make chemistry jokes? Periodically. And this one says, if it's a periodic table, then what is it the rest of the time? <laughs> deep thoughts. All right, so after this presentation and others that will follow, and there will be cards and links to each subsequent presentation in the description below and on my channel, you should gain the following skills. First, being able to use Lewis structures to predict molecules' shapes and bond angles. Second, knowing the difference between bonding pairs and electron domains. Third, identifying and contrasting a molecule's electron domain geometry from its molecular geometry. And fourth, using Lewis structures to predict whether or not a molecule will be polar. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get into it. Taken directly from our textbook, which is referenced in the description below, we learn the following, quote, Lewis structures help us understand the compositions of molecules and their covalent bonds. However, Lewis structures do not show one of the most important aspects of molecules, their overall shapes. The shape and size of a molecule, together with the strength and polarity of its bonds, largely determine its properties. For example, the chapter opening photograph shows a molecular model of diazepam, better known as Valium. Valium works by binding to certain important sites in the central nervous system. Its effectiveness is highly dependent on the shape and size of the molecule as well as on the charge distributions within it. Even a small modification to its molecular shape or size dramatically alters the drug's effectiveness. So, in this chapter, of course, we're going to learn about molecular geometry, which is another way of saying molecule shapes. So generally speaking, molecules adopt the shape that keeps all of the atoms in them as far away, that is, as spaced out from each other as possible. For example, in the molecule carbon tetrachloride, whose Lewis structure is shown right here, minus the lone pairs on the chlorines that I've left out for simplicity, the furthest apart that the four chlorine atoms can get on a flat two-dimensional surface, like this lecture slide, is 90 degrees. In real life, though, molecules do not exist in a two-dimensional world. They exist in a three-dimensional world where each of these chlorine atoms can actually spread out further than 90 degrees as depicted here. Now, this type of shape that's conveyed in three different drawings here is called a tetrahedron. You can see that the chlorines, that's the green spheres here, can spread out from their central carbon atom, that's the gray sphere in the middle, to have a 109.5 degree bond angle between each chlorine atom. This idea then, the idea that atoms like to spread out as much as possible is called the VSEPR or valence shell electron pair repulsion model. Which brings us to a beautiful lecture problem. I want you to draw out the Lewis structure of water and then determine that molecule's overall shape. Now I'm not going to answer this for you, but I will put a link floating over my head or in the description below in which I will take you through this. And as a warning, it is to an older video with terrible audio. That takes us to the end of this video then. Thank you for watching my dear students. Until the next video, please have an enjoyable rest of your day. Woo! <laughs>